Are you looking for a good way to clean and disinfect the media in your ebb and flow system? In this video, I'll show you how I keep my beds clean without ever even having to remove the media from the flood tray. In this video, I'll be using antimicrobial cleaners, scrub brushes, cleaning pads, bottle brushes, measuring cups that measure in milliliter and liter, rubber gloves, eye protection, distilled or reverse osmosis water, and 35% hydrogen peroxide that's been diluted to 6%. I'll show you how to dilute hydrogen peroxide when we get to that part. Start by removing all the plants from the system, then sift through the media and remove all the large roots and other debris that you can find. Also, go ahead and empty your reservoir and give it a quick scrub. If you want, you can shift media around and clean the bottom of the flood tray. There was a lot of clay residue in the bottom of my tray, even though I rinsed the clay pebbles pretty well before I ever put them in the system. Luckily, it's easy to clean up with a little water and a sponge. Also, make sure that you check the fill and drain ports for roots or anything else that might be causing a clog. I grew spinach, arugula, and cilantro around this fill port, and they had pretty well filled the port up with roots. If you do find debris, go ahead and clean the fill and drain ports so that the system will flush better. To limit algae formation, I intentionally set up my ebb and flow system so that the top two inches of media stay dry. The media on the bottom that stays wet is always shielded from grow lights, so algae is basically non-existent in my flood tray. To completely soak all the media, I need to install a second riser on the drain fitting. If your system normally floods the entire bed, you won't need to do this. Before you can calculate a dilution, you need to know how many gallons of water it takes to completely flood all the media in your system. For my system, it takes roughly eight gallons of water. While we're on the topic of water, you need to use distilled or reverse osmosis water. Tap and well water contain minerals that reduce the oxidation potential of unstabilized hydrogen peroxide. Go ahead and fill your reservoir with that distilled water, and I'll explain how to dilute concentrated hydrogen peroxide. I buy food grade 35% hydrogen peroxide by the gallon. It saves money and it doesn't have any stabilizers in it. I built an easy to use dilution calculator on my website that makes the dilution process simple. There's a link to the calculator in the description. So looking at the calculator, I'll enter my initial hydrogen peroxide concentration is 35%. I want to dilute down to 6%. And 8 gallons of water is roughly 30.4 liters. In case you're wondering how I got that, a gallon is roughly 3.8 liters. So 8 gallons times 3.8 is 30.4. Based on the dilution calculation, I need to add 5.21 liters of 35% hydrogen peroxide to 25.19 liters of water to make eight gallons of 6% hydrogen peroxide. So one more word of caution, when you use this much hydrogen peroxide, you need to ventilate the room, open a door, open a window, you know, set up a fan where it's blowing fresh air into the area. And you don't wanna sit in the same room with the hydrogen peroxide while it's activated. It's just not real good for your health. It can irritate your eyes, it can irritate your throat. It's normally nothing that is a huge concern, but you still want to take precautions. Now that we know how much concentrated peroxide we need, we can go ahead and measure that out. Make sure you put on gloves and eye protection before messing around with concentrated hydrogen peroxide. It will burn the ever-loving crap out of you if you're not careful. So I added hydrogen peroxide to the reservoir in increments. I added 2 liters, then 2 liters, followed by the last 1.21 liters. The reaction that you see in the video is the peroxide oxidizing organic material in the reservoir. The stuff that you see floating on top of the res is dried nutrient salts that were stuck to the bottom of the reservoir. If you were to mix hydrogen peroxide and distilled water in a clean cup or bucket, there wouldn't be a reaction like this. 
Now it's time to kick on the pump and let the peroxide do its job in the flood tray. Since the tray is not completely flooded, I move the expanded clay around to make sure everything gets a good dose of hydrogen peroxide. I let the system recirculate continuously for around three hours. After that, I drain the reservoir, fill it with clean water, and start the first rinsing cycle. During this cycle, I go ahead and move the media over the drain port because the drain acts kind of like a vacuum cleaner and sucks all the small roots and plant bits down into the reservoir. It's a good idea to tie a filter bag over your pump or drain tube. I didn't do this, and you'll see the mess it made of my pump a little later on in the video. I normally run two rinsing cycles. Both cycles run for about 30 minutes to an hour and I try to move the media over the drain port both times. It only takes a few minutes to cycle all the media over the drain port, and the drain port does a really good job of sucking all the little roots off the media. Once I'm done rinsing, I remove the second standoff from my drain line, then I empty the reservoir and give it a good scrub down with an antimicrobial cleaner. If you use air stones, Go ahead and give them a little time in the hydrogen peroxide hot tub too. Since you're in a cleaning mood, go ahead and clean off any fans, grow lights, or other equipment. My dogs shed hair like crazy, so I'm constantly cleaning these fans. Like I said earlier, I made a total mess out of this pump. The filter's caked up with roots, but I didn't have a filter bag or a paint strainer to put on it, so I just had to go with what I had. Luckily, active aqua pumps are easy to break down to clean. Maybe a better statement would be to say that active aqua pumps can be broken down for cleaning. I had a little bit of a hard time getting this one apart, but it came apart. I throw all the components in a bucket of soapy water and give them a good scrub. I soak the filter for a few minutes to break up all the big chunks of roots on it. Then I'm able to spray all the small particles off of it with a sprayer on a kitchen sink. And Viola, the filter's good as new. Now it's just a matter of putting the pump back together. Bottle brushes are perfect for cleaning tubing. I made this tubing cleaner out of a bottle brush and a metal coat hanger. Since the hydrogen peroxide bath has pretty much already loosened up anything inside the tubing, I just use soapy water to finish the job. Rinse the tubes off, and they're ready to reinstall. Now it's time to reassemble the system, fill the reservoir with fresh nutrient, and get started on your next batch of plants. I hope this video helped you. If you have questions, please ask them in the comments section. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. That's all I've got, so I'll see you next time.